Cheers. That. Oh, it's gonna be a drug night, you guys. Ah, uh, Wakanda forever, Mark. Wakanda Mark. forever. That's how long it's been. <laughs> it, it's, <laughs> it's been Watchmen so black. It's long. been Watchmen so black long, guys. Yes. In, in case you haven't seen the last time Malcolm was on the show with me, it was literally Watchmen was out, and we were discussing amongst ourselves, as we want to do, just how black is this Watchmen show? It's very black. It's so black it's gone now. <laughs> Bam! Clink. Black early and often. So how have you been, man? I've been pretty good. Yeah. There was a pandemic. Yeah, you made it, though. I made it through. Uh, it was very nice. Thank you. Th Someone's wearing a Rufus shirt. Aww. That's how long the pandemic has been. Last time I was here, the show was on. It wasn't. It wasn't on. No, that would have been nice, though. That would have been nice. Just for the bit. Uh, it's been a lovely... Is this, is this good for optics? I don't know where to put this. I never know where to put things. <laughs> <laughs> Ask my girlfriend. Yeah. Um, sorry, she's here. That was weird. I know. Whoops. That was weird. That ought to be fun. Um, no, last time I was here, I don't know what I do. I started trying to do new stuff because everyone was... Uh, Everyone was worried that their jobs would be gone. Some jobs were gone. I thought mine would be gone. Mm -hmm. So I tried every single thing in the world. I was, I was podcasting yeah. for a half a minute from my house every Tuesday. Uh, that was really drunk. Uh, was that uh, live with Malcolm with Malcolm? It was going live with Malcolm with Malcolm. Because the idea was that just in case I got fired from the show, it was still, you still call it my show. Mm. So like when it was, my, it was going live with Malcolm with me, and in that way, if, if I got fired, my name was still on the show. I don't know who would take over. Reginald Vell Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> going live with Malcolm with Reginald Vell Johnson. We're going, I wanted, you know what? I had an idea to do, to do going live with Malcolm with Malcolm with Malcolm Jamal Warner. Oh. <sighs> Having him take over for me. Like I would sit out and like just have them just go on. That way, that way we could always keep the name. Do you know what I mean? I, absolutely. You got to fucking trademark and copyright that yeah. shit. Yeah. Then I do a show with Malcolm McDowell after that. You know what I mean? Nice. Just nice. be a series of that. How many Malcolms can we get? I don't know. No, no. I, think, I think we'd start the two. It's just those. <laughs> now nah, there's the dude from, three. Uh, from iZombie. What was his name? Malcolm Goodwin. Malcolm Goodwin. See? I once lost a role to Malcolm Goodwin. <laughs> uh, I really hated it. I called up. It was a, this, is this how your show goes? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So, so there's this rule, there's a rule, this is a, this is a movie being produced by 50 Cent and written by my boy Cassius, and my boy Cassius wrote this movie, and he's like, man, I need, and this is years ago, maybe eight years ago, nine, who knows, I don't really have a concept of time, I smoke a lot of weed. So, so Familiar with it. You guys, you know what it is. I know so, how this goes. <laughs> so the guy over here. This guy. Smokes a lot of weed. The Kevin guy, right? And I don't. Oh, Okay. So, that's I, this night. Oh, uh, well, I've, I'll replace Kevin Smith for you by smoking enough. Chin, chin. To Kevin it up. <laughs> National coming out there. You coming out as Kevin Smith too? I'm sucking dick out of solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, when we get to Q&A, just line up over here. <laughs> and we'll, we're going to suck dicks from left to right. <laughs> and then we'll loop back around and fondle some balls just to make sure that yeah. everybody's happy. I'm dyslexic, though, so I have to do the balls first. <laughs> yeah, no. from the jump. So uh, there's this movie, uh, yeah. and my boy Cash is like, I gotta attach you to the movie, and I was like, don't attach me. It's it's a weird, you know, you want to attach people because you think it'll get the movie done. But to be honest, a bunch of shit happens down the line. Who knows? Things change. He's like, no, man, I want to attach you. I'm like, ah, don't sweat it. And I don't think he fully attaches me, but he's like, you know, theoretically, you're attached. So later on, it comes down the line, the movie's being auditioned. I'm going in for an audition, and I go, and I go, Cassius, man, hey, I'm going in for your movie today. I don't know if I'll see you. He's like, there's auditions today? I'm like, oh, this isn't going well. Um, <laughs> so, so I go in, I audition, I kill it. Um, and, then he's, and then I go home, and it's like days later, and I check to see if I got it, and they're like, they go like, did you get it? Who, Malcolm? Yes, Malcolm got it. I was like, yeah. They were like, wait, Malcolm, what's your last name? It was like, Barrett. It was like, oh, no, Goodwin got it. Yeah. And that's, that was that's, the last time you ever heard from Malcolm Goodwin. And that's the last Goodwin. time any of us ever heard from Malcolm Goodwin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. He's a nice guy when the podcast comes out. He's a <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all he, fine. He's this cool guy. Yeah, Reacher, season two. 
Watch it. He's good in it. He's very good in he's it. Good. Reacher is a good show. I like it. I know. I mean, he's doing the job that he's supposed to be doing. What are you doing? <laughs> okay, that's okay, because that's better. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, Reacher's good. Reacher's a solid show. Malcolm Goodwin's on there. It's starring uh, the tall white guy whose name I don't know, but he didn't have a good time doing uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Alan Richson? Yes. Not to be confused with Alan Rickman, who did not do... <laughs> no. Who did not play Don... <laughs> Too soon for Alan Rickman? <laughs> for Alan Rickman? Rest in peace, George Burns. <laughs> what are we doing? What are well, we doing? Yes. I mean... <laughs> Angela Lansbury. Angela Lansbury. Jack Reacher. That would be, that would be would, too soon. That would be too soon. That's too soon. Who 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 wrote that? Oh. I mean, sorry. I didn't, Welcome back <laughs> to the show. I, I didn't kill Angela Lansbury <laughs> yet. Oh, what? <laughs> I know. It's, it's a, a weird joke. I know. I, I, um, it, it disappeared midway through. Like I had it. And then I lost. I just heard her singing um, a recording from Beauty and the Beast, and she's she's absolutely excellent in it. Mm. Um, she's. Did you guys know Angela Lansbury's British? That's uh, that's all I got for Angela Lansbury facts. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's a, she wrote some murders. She wrote murders. <laughs> Can I tell you? This will not be relevant, but to three people from Brooklyn, I I was. You probably don't realize this, but I was a nerd growing up. And <laughs> that guy, fucking skinny Santa Claus, has fucking jokes about me. <laughs> I'm susceptible. We're all broken inside. <laughs> um, I was younger, and I was at a party, and I was never fucking cool. And I'm at this party. I grew up in Brooklyn, so it was you know, like basement parties, black parties, hip hop, reggae's playing, all sorts of shit. And Someone goes. So now uh, you're seven, right? Uh, <laughs> when you were I'm, younger, I think I'm twelve or thirteen, right? That's when kids dance to music. Yeah. Uh, so there's this song, if you guys don't know, called "Murder She Wrote," and it's a it's a reggae song. It goes "Murder She Wrote," na na na. Um, I I didn't realize that, and then so somebody goes, "Oh, I miss Murder She Wrote," and I go, "Hey, who wants to see a show about an old bitch solving crimes anyway?" <laughs> and Everybody laughed because they thought that I knew that there was a song called Murder, She Wrote, but I was not cool or making no. a cool joke. You were just being factual. Another uncool story of my life. One time I was playing Urkel in a school play. <laughs> what school is this? <laughs> like death, death of a Salesman? No, we're doing Family Matters. <laughs> what kind of bullshit curriculum is that? We're doing the classics here. <laughs> we only do the classics. I'm Professor Vell Johnson. <laughs> We're only going to do tonight. Why is this Reginald Vell Johnson night? Every night is Reginald Vell <laughs> Johnson night. You just gotta want it bad enough. <laughs> so yes, please tell us about your time on the boards as Urkel. I'm, so it's this made-up play, and I'm playing Urkel because I did an Urkel impression. Every play's a made-up play, man. Uh, damn it. <laughs> oh, fuck, that's correct. <laughs> Sorry. Shit. Okay. So it's this made-up play that didn't exist previous to us making it up, which still is every play. Um, and it's rehearsal, and I'm playing Urkel, and I get there, and they're like, hey, did you dress up in character? And I hadn't. And I was so uncool that I didn't even lie about it. They were like, did you dress up in character? And I went, no. And then I sat there. I could have lied. That's how fucking uncool I was. I was like, nope, this is it. And then two brothers in tracksuits hippity hopped <laughs> away looking cool. Because they likes to party. Because they likes to party, They don't baby. cause trouble. They don't bother nobody. Right. They're just two men that's on the mic. And when they rock up on the mic, they, they rock, rock the mic. Right. right. Thank you, Gene. Excellent. Gene was there when that song was written. <laughs> Gene's old. It's a joke about my friend... My friend Eugene being old, you guys wouldn't get it. Yeah, I mean, he's so old he was there when it was two mile. <laughs> hey, Eugene. Eugene Bird, boys Eugene and girls. Eugene Bird, everybody. Eugene Coast Bird. Star of eight mile. That's he, came to, he came to get roasted. I know. Hey, Eugene. Sorry about that. 
I'm going to joke about my girl and what we do. So, I mean, you're, you're, we're par for the course at this point. How are you doing, Cynthia? Cynthia is a... <laughs> so, listen, tell me about... Because I'm not going to interview you because that would be weird because we've been friends weird. for too long. But yes. I don't know oh, okay. your nerd origin story. Oh. Like, how did it manifest for you? I know how it manifests. It's a, it's a coming out day, so let's, let's talk about it. Sure, sure, sure. It is National Coming Out Day. <laughs> yeah, so when did you first come out as a nerd? Um, well, really, it's people that decide for you. <laughs> Every nerd just got struck in their heart just now. <laughs> um, I thought this was fine. Uh, no. 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 You know what's funny? Um, one of the earliest, there, there's two early stories I have. One, I used to uh, make up comic book stories with my friend Torin Clark, who some folks might know because he now actually draws for Marvel and DC and a whole mm -hmm. bunch of stuff, which we found out like just on Instagram and things like that. Um, I tell this story now because uh, I do stand up now because I was, uh, I had enough of an already <laughs> career. <laughs> I was like, what a, let's do a new thing. Let's do a new thing. Let's fail at something else. And so uh, I tell a joke about how when I was younger, I used to be into ventriloquism and uh, I had a, yeah, and I'm not going to tell it in joke form. I'm going to tell it in real life form. Um, I had Wait, a, what? what? <laughs> they don't let black people be into ventriloquism. <laughs> they just don't. Well, I quit early, <laughs> if, it, if it helps. <laughs> this is what's most amazing. So I lived in the Bronx, and I was passing by a bodega, and I go inside, and they have a Laurel and Hardy ventriloquist dummies. Um, yeah, 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 real current reference. Mm. And, and I saw it and I was like, huge fan of Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> Black kid from the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking eat that shit up. I'm gonna stick my hand in this little I, white yeah, man's ass. I got to. What another fine mess you've gotten <laughs> me into. Uh, Officer, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> we and left I, the house this way. And I, br and I bring these little things home. And I quit early because uh, ventriloquism is hard. Like, I assumed I'd know how to throw my voice just because I saw it on TV or something. And so I, I literally, I'm just like, this is bullshit. <laughs> I mean, it's hard, but it'll get you laid. <laughs> I mean, Willie was deep in pussy. Well, that, nothing, <laughs> nothing gets you booty like a little fake wood. <laughs> All right, guys. No, that was good. Talking wood jokes. Talking wood jokes. And the moral of that story is the ventriloquist dummy is still in that bodega in the Bronx. <laughs> ah! Ah! Just a haunted piece of bread. <laughs> Just a cat. Yeah. Just a haunted cat. Just a haunted cat. Haunted, haunted bodega cat. Write it. I already did. <laughs> That's There's good. an issue of a comic book that I do called Census that's out today from Comixology, issue number two. Do you like uh, comic books? I do love me some comic books. Well, the second issue drops today, and it's about a bodega. It's like my love letter to bodegas. And there is a, a bodega cat of questionable um, origins. Questionable origins? I won't spoil it any more than that. I'll just say he might not be what he uh, appears to be. Appears to be? Is he possibly like one of those cats from the Marvel movies that are like some weird alien? I don't know what they're called. No! Flurkins? No, not a flurkin. Okay, he's not, a, he's not about to Flurkin get some nerds. <laughs> <laughs> gonna kick his ass later. You fucking put your head in the toilet bowl, loser. What do you read? Books, stupid. <laughs> um, so yeah, that oh to bodegas. You never really answered my question because ven what? ventriloquist dummy is nobody's way into being a nerd. Uh huh. You want to know how I was? Yeah, nerd? I was a math kid. I was on the math. I was on the math team. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You were a mathlete. I was. I was not a mathlete. I was on the math team, and I was one of the top players uh, up until. <laughs> <Wow>. Play. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> I was acting like there was no tomorrow. Uh, I think this they call crazy that, mathematical gangster. They call that playing dice. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like. I'm really good with these numbers. <laughs> Bam. Kilo. Seven. No, I was, I was a math kid, so I, and I went to math and science high school, and I was in uh, advanced. You just one of them smart kids. 
I was one of those smart kids. That was me. They'd be so proud of you now. They, oh, yeah. And now I just, I play smart people now because uh, actually learning things is hard. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> I play it on TV. Yes, and I memorize things that smart people say. <clears throat> All right, so mathlete, sorry, I was math, math team. team. I went, to, I went to Stuyvesant High School, which was the number one math and science high school in the country, which is what my girlfriend has heard multiple times from me and my mom. Nice. <laughs> it was like, there's the, the fame high school, LaGuardia. There was LaGuardia, and then there was my school, and my, you'll hear it, because my mom like, I don't know if you know this, but Malcolm, Malcolm went to uh, Stuyvesant High School. It was the number one math and science um, school in the country at the time. Uh, I'm 42, so <laughs> none of this means anything. It does to you. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. So then what was the... Okay, we, I see how you're predisposed yes. to nerd shit. Yes. But what, what opened the door? What was the thing? What was the like, oh, I got to have me some of that. I'm going to get all up in this space shit. <laughs> Um, like if there was a media or a TV show yeah, or something like, like that. Starman, tell me this story about this young Jeff Bridges like a, who's like naked and hairless the whole time. Like, like I was really into Mac and Me or something like that? Or like, I mean, <laughs> Zoobily Zoo? I would be 100% on Is anyone with. here old enough to know Zoobily Zoo? Thank you, Santa Claus. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kill Cullen. I don't, have a, I don't have a nerd origin, like a thing. No, well, what, what were you into as a kid? What was your jam? Uh, you were like, moms, I got to be home in order to watch fucking Six Million Dollar Man or The Incredible I Hulk. I like Six Million Dollar Man. I watched The Incredible Hulk uh, with Bruce Banner. Or was he David Banner on the show? He, he was, was David on the Banner because they were afraid of alliteration. Yeah. They're afraid of lawsuits? They're afraid of lawsuits? And I believe. alliteration. <laughs> That's what I'm afraid of. Mm. Um, I watched The Smurfs. I read, maybe. Just books? books? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually, I used to, that was the other thing. I used to write myself. I used to, I, when I was in first grade, I used to write books that I'd read to the kindergartners. So I started writing stories. And then that's how I started getting into doing plays and how I became an, an actor. It's funny. They always ask, like, what inspired you? And it's like, I didn't see a whole lot of black actors that I wanted to be growing up. Mm. Or it was few and far between. Like, I, I don't know who I wanted to be. Like, I you didn't want to be like John Amos. You didn't want to be Sherman Hemsley. I didn't want to be balding and hoping for good times. <laughs> 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 and yet here we are. And yet here we are. <laughs> Ain't we lucky we got him. <laughs> but I mean, like, I, ironically. I loved Greatest American Hero. I love I love Greatest American Hero and Notorious for representation. All, all the representation. <laughs> He's got curly hair, so maybe. I'm like that motherfucker. He might have a Jew fro. I don't know. That's something. Um, it's not racist. I'm on both sides. <laughs> Remember my secret identity? No. What? Are you joking? No. Oh my God, guys. Do you guys know my secret identity? Fuck yes, you and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck my secret identity was Jerry O'Connell. It was the first time I was exposed to Jerry O'Connell. Mm. And he had sort of powers, which was that he could levitate, but not really. So he couldn't really fly. So he would take these aerosol cans and fly. This is before we knew what they did to the ozone layer. <laughs> so literally, it's just Jerry O'Connell spraying deodorant and destroying the ozone layer while trying to fly. Through the world. I'm not even sure he had powers. Um, and then Dr. Jeff Coat, I think, was like his sort of mentor guy here. I got too nerdy for this crowd. For this crowd. I'm telling you. That sounds All right, thank you, Lamont. great. He had powers, right? He had like one or two powers. Like Jerry O'Connell. He could like make a left on red? Like, was that his power? <laughs> He would like kind of fly almost, and I don't know. I just remember Dr. Jeff Coat, my secret identity. You'll never guess my secret identity. Boom, 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 boom. I'm sorry. <laughs> Those are all the words I know. Those are all the words, that's it? <laughs> Those are it. Uh, okay. I, I was hoping for more, but I'm And then glad. I used to write poetry, and I used to rap and do battles. And uh, I mean, I didn't ask for your black origin story. <laughs> I wanted your nerd origin story. But all right, it's okay. um, I really liked Doctor Who, but that was later in life. That was like thirty. 
Okay. <laughs> Listen. This is going nowhere, man. Nowhere fast. <laughs> um, all right. I want to talk about, we're going to get into the show proper. Oh, well. Usually we don't announce that. But uh, I did a podcast yesterday with Kevin. We did a Fat Man Beyond. And I purposefully did not talk about this program because I wanted to talk about it with you. Interview with a Vampire. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. My Have you guys Lord. seen Interview Have you guys with a seen Interview with a Vampire? Anybody? Yes, yes. Have you guys seen Interview with a Vampire? Yeah. Alternate Blues Bruce Willis? Have you seen? <laughs> Come on, you Bruno. You seen it? Okay, all right. Uh, I love this show. I watched it. No one asked you. I watched it. I really like this guy. I watched it uh-huh. in anticipation uh-huh. of tonight's show. Yes. So... I sit there. I don't know. I, don't, I, I barely remember anything about the original uh, interview with a vampire. I knew there was uh, Johnny Depp was in it. No. And then, okay. Okay. No. Christian Slater. Bradley Cooper. <laughs> yes. Alan Rickman. <laughs> and Alan Rickman. <laughs> and a young Angela Lansbury. <laughs> As Suki. <laughs> I'll do this show for me. I don't care. Um... They serve beer in hell. Um, I, I, I loved it. I, I was watching. I couldn't remember anything except for Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. And I didn't remember if there was actual homoeroticism in the, in the original movie or if I just felt everyone was like, no, 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 it was there. It was clear. Great, great. Issue settled. So, so I'm watching Interview with a Vampire. And, um, you know, it opens up with, oh, here's how they get you. Here's how they get you. Eric Bogosian. <laughs> Here's how to get you. How does this show usually go? Eric Bogosian. Do you guys know that actor? Yeah. That's how they get you. <laughs> <laughs> get me Bogosian. We need a fucking closer. <laughs> okay. What are the kids talking about? Eric Bogosian. They love that talk radio shit. Come on. Monologue me, bitch. <laughs> Who's on the show? Megan Thee Stallion, Eric Bogosian. <laughs> Eric Bogosian's first. Go <laughs> <Don't> figure. <laughs> so, so they introduce this fucking journalist, this fucking asshole esque journalist, and it's it's nothing like. Was Tom Cruise the original? Was he the journalist? Uh, Christian Slater. Christian Slater. Cuffs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I loved cuffs. Cuffs. Do you remember cuffs? Yeah. Um, he was a cop. Um, so Christian Slater, Eric Bogosian, I don't know if you guys know, nothing alike. No. Right? So they've, t- they've done this whole new take um, by making him this sort of uh, curmudgeon. Right? But then they've also made, who was the guy? Brad Pitt before? Yes. As Louis. Yeah. Now he's still pretty, but he's black. Right? Like he's a black guy. From, he's Grey Worm from fucking uh, the Game of Swords. Yes. Yes. He's, 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 he's Big Perm from Game of Swords. <laughs> yep. and, it's, and, it's, and it's one... Here's, here's the amazing thing, right? Here's the, here's the thing. You're waiting for, like, oh, shit, the black's going to kick into the story. When they fucking... They start fucking african american it up. How are they going to ruin my childhood by blackening this story? They're ruin my vampire story by putting blacks in it. <laughs> How are they going mean, to do it this we time? ruin everything else. We do. Uh, first, my, first they came for our mermaids. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, okay. Then they came for my elves. And I said, okay. Now they come for my, my vampires. vampires. And I said, no. Not Draw today. the line here. No, this far, no. no further. I want my undead white or nothing at all. <laughs> I imagine that's how the letters went. Pretty much. Uh, when the pilot aired. But the interesting thing about it is that you're waiting when they do that story. You're kind of waiting to go like, how will they change this, or or what you know, will they will his experience um, be told within the story? And so very early on, there's a guy. He grabs. He, he's literally a pimp, and he grabs this white guy, and he he calls him the N word, and and he says, and he says in the most eloquent way, he says something to the effect of like, uh, "Suck my dick." I don't know, but. It, <laughs> 
the most eloquent way of saying the most eloquent way. But he does it so well, and it's very interesting because you sit there and you go, oh, this is like crazy and interesting thing. And it's interesting because as a black person, you sit there and there's a part of you that is waiting for the authentic experience of having that person live that life, right? And really because you've sat and watched whitewashed things for so long that you've become accustomed to that, that when something actually speaks to your experience and uses it in a way that is authentic and natural, you go, there's something that hits you in here. You're just like, oh shit, like yeah, no, that is something that's, that's interesting and overwhelming. And, and I made a joke about The Little Mermaid, but that's, that's how used we are to seeing a thing that was like, wait, this made up creature's black? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's made up. Um, and so that was really interesting to see is the, how it played because it was very authentic and how it played into it. And the story and the poetry of the words, I've never seen or I haven't heard such beautiful um, poetry in terms of dialogue on television, in terms of just, and it's fairly modern text. It's, it's, it's not that elevated a text, um, but their word usage and their word choice is so beautiful and so eloquent and so surprising at every turn and so arresting with every beat and with every interaction. And so it's one of those shows that very immediately draws you in simply with language, with story, and with conflict. And that was just amazing to see, even with the music and the score and the way they undercut how things would go, the expectations you would have um, were really beautiful. And in um, the name of Coming Out Day, super cool gay sex in there. <laughs> Really cool gay sex. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember <clears throat> the homo uh, homoeroticism of the book, but I don't ever remember it being explicit. I remember That's it was, what I was saying. That's yeah. what I was thinking. It was, it was very much like, oh, no, it's all kind of subtext, and it's all unspoken, and we're cutting away from these scenes before people are going to yes. fucking get naked. Um, but to make it explicit and to make it part of Louis' journey, as a black man, as a gay man, as a gay black man when you couldn't be either and succeed in any real way, and then to have Lestat run into that story as a rich white dude from the continent who has a surface level understanding of race in America, especially race in America in New Orleans, mm -hmm. where he can say things like, oh, they shouldn't treat you that way, Louis. It's, it's awful that they do that. I would never treat you like some kind of exotic animal. It's like, yeah, but you also just did. You know, like, Lestat doesn't know what he doesn't know, and so will say the things that are still kind of fucked up and reek of the privilege the character is supposed to have. And it's, it's fascinating how they've deepened what, I mean, I haven't read the books since high school. I remember loving it. That and, and Vampire Lestat um, were the two, like, Anne Rice's that I dug into. I didn't go much deeper because then it got weird and she got all Anne Rice-y. Um, but those two were the kind of the, 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 the duality of those two stories about here's one vampire and the other vampire. It was very, it was very kind of modern in the metatextuality of it. But to see it enriched, enriched and enlivened with a sense of place, a sense of race, a sense of class, a sense of privilege, a sense of, of longing, a sense of pain, and then the contemporary story, which doesn't wipe away the, the Christian Slater version of it, it just incorporates it. Like I was a younger man, says Eric Bogosian, the last time we sat down, and I wasn't ready to have this conversation. But now I am. So suddenly, all of that other shit was text, and all of it is canon. But now it's a different conversation. And I just love how it's incorporating all of it and updating all of it and infusing it with what feels like a modern story, even though it is now 40 years old, if not older. And it's amazing because it's also one of the few stories I've seen about black people during Jim Crow that isn't strictly about subservience, mm. um, which is something that's not explored. Like, that's one of the things that I get annoyed about slave movies is just like other shit happened. There's more there's more story than he beat me and I ran away. Uh, and so, like, this was really interesting because it was like, yeah, we smiled before. 1933. <laughs> we had some good days. <laughs> there was one. There was a good day. There was one or two good days before and after the Civil War. Uh, and so, like, well, that's always what's frustrating is that I, I think people forget that stories are about conflict, and I think people are afraid to put in conflicts that they don't know, and because of that, you wind up writing a story that isn't true and isn't authentic. And when you could add those elements in a way that's true and authentic and interesting. It's fun, and that's also what you want at the end of the day. You want a really interesting, fun story. And that was what was amazing, is that the second half of that show surprised me every five minutes. 
Mm. It surprised me with the story development, with the relationships, with the the life and death, with the gore, the violence, um, with the music, uh, with the ending, all of it. I was just surprised at every turn. Um, and that's what you want. That's what you want out of horror. That's what you want out of any story is just to be surprised, enthralled, and interested. Did you see the second episode? I didn't, and it's because I, I was getting high. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, priorities are what mu- they must be. I get yeah, it. I mean, that was but busy. it's 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 similarly really good because it does follow all those threads. But there's a great moment, and I'm not going to spoil too much. Except Eric Bogosian, the great Eric Bogosian. That's how you get the kids. That's how you win Bringing over the teams. Bringing them in, just fucking like just breadcrumbing your way in with just Eric Bogosian, Kodak Black, and Eric Bogosian. Yeah. <laughs> One time only. On tour. Look, listen, we could have gotten Selena Gomez <laughs> with like 400 million uh, fucking Instagram followers, but no, we got the OG Bogosian. Bring me to Bogo. <laughs> Buy one, get one. <laughs> Bogosian. <That's> Bogosian. <laughs> um, but he asked the question, and I won't clarify the question, but he just asked it more than once in the most deadpan way I've ever heard. So did you eat the baby? Mm. So did you eat the baby? Best question I've ever heard in the show. That's a great question. Did you eat that baby? Did you eat the baby? I wrote down some notes about the show. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did homework? Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's an, uh, whatever. You're not I, supposed to do homework. I do the homework. Right. Well, watch. I wrote down two things. All right. Uh, oh, there's three things. This is the last one's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. Let, tell us where we're going to go. Yeah, I don't want you to be surprised by the journey. Everyone hates surprises. <laughs> The GPS. Just yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I was your GPS, I'd be like, ah, you're almost there. <laughs> I think this is it. Close. Um, my favorite lines from the show are, Eric Bogosian's trying to interrupt him and tell him what's happening. And he goes, let the tail seduce you. It's like, oh, bitch, I took off my whole, <laughs> took off all my shit. I wasn't even wearing nothing, and then I took it off. I was like, <laughs> uh, my other one is, um, I'll tell you, shit, shut the fuck up, hold on. <laughs> Let the tale seduce you. <laughs> uh, the second one was, uh, you played docent to the gentleman vampire. Wow. You played docent to the gentleman vampire. What? That's writing. And in the third one, this isn't a writing thing, this is, a, this is an observation. Okay. Um, my favorite part is, um, all right, spoiler alert, two. Three, four. There's a threesome. Okay. How you doing? You, your eyes perked up a little bit. How you doing, man? I like. I fuck. I fuck with your whole spirit. Like a threesome. It's only Tuesday. <laughs> but okay. She was like. She was like. They a little late. Um, yeah. That's my Friday as usual. <laughs> so, don't play docent. Uh, so <laughs> Is that a camera? Yeah, that's um, <laughs> see, see there? That's the internet. Fuck out of here. Yeah, man. <laughs> Hello, internet. That's crazy. You gonna put this on the internet? It's already on the internet. That's crazy, man. Technology. Yeah. So, so, let me get one of these Wakanda feathers. Is that, y'all still doing that? Well, you had a Can beer. Can I get a drink? That was beer. I want a Wakanda forever. One of these? Can I get one of those? I can yell at you, because... Yeah. It's Wakanda and I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. So have I not done enough? Have I not done enough? <laughs> I have given everything I have to give. Have I not done enough? For one more Wakanda forever. <laughs> My son would like another drink. <laughs> <laughs> so my last mm. My last favorite part is that you slow. So the, my he's last making a drink. <laughs> he's muddling fucking he's blueberries. Do, he's doing and a shit. lot. I know. I'm being an asshole. I apologize. There's a mortar and a pestle, and but, he's got a little squeezy. I'm going to yell as soon as I get it, though. I'm going to turn around. Um, my other favorite thing is they're having a threesome, mm. and Lestat is 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 uh, the brother Lestat and the sister in the middle, um, and and he goes sleep well, and does like this, and puts her in an orgasm. And she's like, oh, and she does one of those those woman things where they've they've forgotten to be sexy anymore. Where they just, uh, I'm, I'm, 
It's just, it's just against the pillow, you know what I mean? She's just... Because <laughs> she's just breathing out of whatever, it's just not touching the pillow, or just... <laughs> the two people not laughing, you, you know why. <laughs> Change your game up. <laughs> Thank you, colonizer. <laughs> Oh, never mind, never mind. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what kind? Mexican or Spanish? What do we got? Because yeah. <laughs> one of those. We got to know your history. Yeah, yeah. I think I wouldn't know. You're a mm-hmm. conquistador. Yeah, sneak a Latino past me. <laughs> no, thank you for the drink, though, earnestly. <laughs> so uh, what I was saying? Listen, man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow you, I, you derailed me. <laughs> but I wasn't even on any rails. Oh, yeah, yeah. The sex scenes are lovely. The sex scenes yeah. are lovely. You know what? Face, you know what face I'm talking about? <laughs> this brother. Why are you looking at me so serious? You're looking at me like you produce for Conway the Machine. Like you do. That's for the two people in here that love hardcore rap. <laughs> I hope you're happy with that. I am. I'm okay. I don't need to please everybody. <laughs> All right, we're going to talk about some news now. Great. This is the part of the show where... Huge news fans. Huge news fans. Where, according to Kevin, I go on the internet and I copy and paste news from people who've reported it. I've heard this. Yes. That is my role in this podcast, is I spend 45 minutes copy and pasting shit. Genius. Hell yeah. It's a way to make a dollar, my friend. I like it. You're rich. Uh Uh-huh. So, we have talked... Long and hard on this podcast and in the world, how okay. excited we were for Mahershala Ali oh. to be playing the uh, Daywalker. The sequel to Green Book? Yes. <laughs> yes. Black Book. <laughs> Even <Yeah>. greener? Yes. <laughs> Yellow Pages, the sequel to <laughs> Green Book. <laughs> I just got to know where to get a plumber. Who, who will plumb in this neighborhood? <laughs> you guys know what the Green Book is? All right, good. You didn't need a movie wait, to tell did you, you the, Wait, do you think it's the movie or the book? All right, the thank you, book. sir. You never stop surprising me. I love that about you. I love that about you. You're cool. Ah! <laughs> what if I was earnestly afraid? <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, fucking Mahershala Ali. You guys know this movie Blade? You guys, you guys, you guys hear about this movie Blade? <laughs> not, not Zorro the Gay Blade. No, not Zorro the Gay Blade, which is the best kind. Which, bro, was my favorite movie. Was it? When I was like 12 years old. I only know that movie. See? Ladies and gentlemen, the cinematographer for Zorro the Gay Blade. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Alonzo Hamilton, George Hamilton's younger brother, and I shot Zoro the Gay Blade. <laughs> also, George Hamilton references. I mean... Who's this podcast for? Me. <laughs> and Kevin. Jesus Christ. And like-minded individuals Jesus. You, you all need over an the world. AARP card to watch this no, fucking podcast. For real, though. Basically, you need to be like 48 or older. Um... No, Zorro the Gay Blade was my fucking jam when I was a kid because A, Zorro. Zorro's always cool. Zorro's always cool. And, Zorro's always cool. And more than just Zorro, there was his cousin, Bunny Wigglesworth, who dressed in all kinds of fucking colors when he had to take over for Zorro, who sprained his ankle. That's the plot of Zorro the Did you not know what happened to Zorro the Gay Blade? <laughs> let me tell you something I did not know. Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> the plot of Zorro the Gay Blade. In, 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 in celebration of National Coming Out Day, I will tell you what happens in Zorro the Gay Blade. Tell me everything. So, George Hamilton is playing Zorro, right? If you guys don't know George Hamilton, actor from the 80s, 90s, always tan. Super tan. But so he's playing um, Diego de la Vega, right? And he's fucking Zorro. Yes. Swashbuckle. Black satin, the whole jam. All that. Good sword fighting, rides a horse, then tornado. 
does all kinds of cool shit, helps the people of uh, Alta California get rid of the fucking Spanish colonizers. Um, and then he busts his ankle, right? Doing some daring do shit. But the people need a Zorro. They got to have the they Zorro. They got to have a Zorro. And so in comes his cousin, notoriously gay. <laughs> Which is not to be confused with Notorious B.I.G. No. <laughs> Who also happens to be like his identical twin cousin, which happens, apparently, Obviously. named Bunny Wigglesworth, who is like, can you take over to be Zorro while I'm healing up? And he's like, of course I can. Would love to. <laughs> Except I got to do Zorro my way, right? Got to. Got to. So he opens up the fucking chemise, right? And here it is, just fucking wall-to-wall pimp clothes. It's just like... Purple and pink and yellow and orange and periwinkle and just all of it. It can match. The hat had little fucking tassels on it and shit. But Peri- periwinkle's a very gay color. If it's not a gay color, it's at least the gayest word. Like, that, that word came out today. <laughs> <laughs> periwinkle was like, it's my time. This is it. it. It was always, though. It was always periwinkle's time. <laughs> um, and so, but he's also like a legit fucking badass horseman. But he adds, wait for it. A whip. Okay. That's his thing. He's okay. got the fucking sword, but Bunny cracks out a fucking whip on motherfuckers and, and fights crime in Alta California. Sorry. Yeah. No. That's amusing. It's, yeah. It's 100% amusing. But here's the shit. It's also a really good Zora movie. Also, hella gay Zora movie, except there's no sucking of cocks or nothing because it's 1981. <laughs> I like that. A movie's not fully gay until at least two, three cocks are sucked. How's Brokeback Mountain? It's all right. It's pretty straight. Didn't see any dicks getting sucked. You, you see milk? It was okay. Was it gay? No, no dicks got sucked. It's, it's, it's very interesting. So this movie is completely not problematic. No, not at all. Um, I would recommend it for families because that's how I watched it. Really? Yeah, because it's also a really fucking wholesome Zora movie. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. With it, fucking watch it for kids. Okay, I'll watch. It's great. Uh, I don't know why Blade Zora the Gay Blade. Blade. <laughs> how do <did> we get? <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Blade. We're just doing word association and that. Right. <laughs> These are right. particular. Who's topics. got an occupation? <laughs> Uh, so yes, this give movie, me a situation. This movie was supposed to be coming out uh, next November. It was supposed Blade. to supposed to begin production in a couple of months, um, but in the wake of parting ways with the director Basim Tariq and what seemed to be problems with the script, Marvel is pressing pause on the vampire movie. Mahersha Ali, uh, the, the the movie's dead. It's it's gone. What I suggest <laughs> is just watch. The original Blade is really good. It's a solid movie. Did you see it? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Tell me what happens in Blade. Okay. It's about, it's about this vampire, right? <laughs> what is your vampire? You like a daywalker, though. Okay. You see New Jack City? Yeah. It's that dude. <laughs> that dude? That dude's a vampire. Nino? Yes. Nino Brown's a vampire. Nino Betancourt is a vampire? At some point, he goes always bit on black and then kills uh, everybody. <laughs> so wait, what happened to Passenger 56 then? I think he died before <laughs> Passenger 57. <laughs> <laughs> he died right before. Wow. It's crazy. This, did Passenger 56 know that if he was one seat over... He'd have become an immortal daywalker hey. hunting fucking other vampires. Look, and shit. some motherfuckers always want to skate uphill. <laughs> <laughs> On ice, if preferable. <laughs> oh, man. This was almost a podcast once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to help at all. <laughs> I'm here for chaos. <laughs> chaos! <laughs> There's over nine billion motherfuckers. Uh, I'm gonna need another There's drink. There's only twenty thousand police. <laughs> Can you dig it? Can you dig it? That was uh, the Warriors. Yes. <laughs> How are you doing, man? 
So Blade. <laughs> Blade. Uh, yeah. I, I was, I'm, you know, it's, these things are weird. It's weird when a movie gets stalled because you automatically go, oh, I bet the movie's going to fucking suck. They took nine more weeks or four more months for this thing that didn't exist before anyway, and who gives a shit? But like now, now we feel a way like, oh, it took a couple more months. And I don't know. I don't know what it's going to mean. Marvel hasn't completely shit the bed on anything. There's things I've liked much less than other things. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I don't know what this means. What do you think this means? Um, I think it's actually a good thing. Because I think it means that they don't want to give us a shitty version of Blade. And so they're going to take the time to find the people that can make them the best version of Blade. And so rather than race to meet a release date, I'm like, you know what, fuck it. Let's hold back, let's, let's take our time. In as much as we can take time, because at some point Mahershala may or may not ever look a day older than he does. I don't even know how old he is. He could already be no 72 idea. years old. I have no idea. Yeah. He got them good black jeans, man. Super black jeans. Super black. So black. <laughs> how black? On Mahershala Ali's jeans. But Hershey Lee's jeans are so black. black, black. Fuck. <laughs> you went up to the edge. I right up to the edge. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But Hershey Lee's jeans are so black, they started dating white women when they moved to Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first thing that came to mind. There's nothing I could do. You just, just got to ride it out. You got to ride it out. But Hershey Lee's jeans are so black. I'm pretty sure he has sickle cell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! I don't care about my career! I do. <laughs> I'm waiting for that call. Uh, Mahershala Ali's <laughs> jeans are so black. Anyway, let's move on. I don't know. I think you got one more. Um, <laughs> they, they just got fired by Zasloff. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Bam. They won't let it in the Warden Brothers. <laughs> ha <Ha-ha>! ha. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'm done. You done? <laughs> <laughs> is that Dream Killer? Who is this? Who are you? You look familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? What did you do? Where you come from? Who are you? Are you Dream Killer? Are you Mahershala Ali's jeans? Okay, all right. Mahershala <laughs> Ali's jeans <laughs> are so black. I'm not doing it. <laughs> They're so black. Herschel Walker won't claim them as his kid. <laughs> Herschel Walker. <laughs> What's up, Lamont? <laughs> Political humor. <laughs> Daily beloved. Uh, all right, so yeah, Blade is probably going to come out, but later, and I don't know when. So <laughs> That's what we gained from this that's, conversation. That's what we got. That's, that's what we call tying a bow. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking excellent. Suturing that up. Was that the news? That was just Blade news. Oh, okay, that's Blade news, y'all. Blade news. Did you guys watch Mahershala Ali on, what was that show called? Luke Cage? Mm-hmm. All right, that's all. That's all? <laughs> He was good. He was good in it. He wasn't even the blackest person on Luke Cage. He wasn't. Alfre Wooder might have been. Alfre Wooder should play Blade. Yo. She, does she age? She's the same age you've ever seen her in. You actually look like Alfre Wooder's husband. I've met. I've worked with Alfre Woodburn. He he looked like a jazz musician. Who? What? He do. He look. He wears like little hats, and he's like. <laughs> Like scoliosis? <laughs> he's just, he's just got one of those. <laughs> like, like, I'm married to Alfred Woodard. We don't age. <laughs> and I got these rickets. <laughs> hey, I don't know. He's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. Uh, are you I hang out with a lot of famous people. 
Uh, are you are you caught up on Hot D? House of Dragons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. House of the Dragon. Are you are you watching the Hot D? Can I tell you this? Yo. No, not at all. But, so I don't watch House of Dragons because it's, uh, I got nothing against white people. <laughs> but it's just, it's just, I hate the conversations around it. I hate everything that's happening. I hear, I hear the shows. Is it different even? I hated the whole, why is there a black guy in a blonde wig thing or a white wig? And I was like, why? They don't naturally have white hair. I'm like, white people don't naturally have white hair at birth. I don't know a white haired girl. You don't know blonde people? <laughs> that's not white. That's the end of my rant. I haven't watched the show, so it's not informed. <laughs> It's not knowledgeable or informed. It's just 30 seconds of me thinking. Outstanding. <laughs> uh, well, George R.R. R. Martin thinks that... Oh, you read a thing. I, Ooh. Yeah, look, I copy-pasted more news. <laughs> thinks that Hot D needs four seasons to tell its story. According to him, I have quotes. Yeah, four seasons, 40 episodes. We got, we got to have it this. Um... If House of the Dragon had 13 episodes per season, maybe we could have shown all the things we had to time jump over, though that would have risked having some viewers complain that the show was too slow, that nothing happened. As it is, I'm thrilled that we have 10 hours every season to tell our tale. Um, Rings of Power has this, blah, blah, blah. It's going to take four full seasons of 10 episodes each to do justice to the Dance of the Dragons from start to finish. You know what I'd love to do? Tell me. I'd love to, when I pitch a show, I'd just be like, look, it's not going to get good for another six, seven years. First six years, just chill out. Just ease up into it. Slow it down. I had to do how I did it, because that's how we got to do it. Now the 14th year, that's when the show kicks in the gear. <laughs> that's when we tell the story. That's a wild shit to say. Yeah, I, 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 I suppose you can say that shit when you're sitting on a mountain of gold. You can. I don't have that mountain, so no. I'm like, hey man, when's something gonna happen? Or when's a thing hap gonna happen to a person that I care about? Or when am I gonna care about somebody? Like that's, that's my problems with, House, with Hot D. Is that the Game of Thrones is happening and shit's going on. But I don't know who the players of this game are anymore. So sometimes there's episodes with, why is that blonde child in the dark whose name I don't know riding a dragon whose name I don't know and why is that a thing I'm supposed to care about? And I never get answers to that. And then it's like, oh yeah, now it's six years later. And that child who was blonde is now grown up and blonde, and they turn the lights on in the scene so I can see what's happening. And then it's, oh, now he's a grown person who's having fucking static with his cousins, uncles, brothers. I don't know. Everybody's fucking incestuous, so I don't know who's related to who anymore. But now why, why, is, why is any of this happening? I, I will, so we're in a chat together, and, I will, and one of the sections is about the show. And it just sounds like a drunk person who just woke up from a dream discussing what's going on. They're like, look, I was wearing, and then he's gone now, and then look, seven years later, I don't know, I'm the king. <laughs> That's yeah. what it all sounds like. It's very, it's very wiki entry. Well, yeah. It was just like, oh, this happened to him with the name Aegon the Fourth, and then Aegon the Fifth showed up who did this, and there were dragons, 12 of them. They all have names. Syntax, Gygax, Pyfax, Genax, Phil, uh, Lintax, like just the fucking list of dragon names, and I'm supposed to keep them all straight because. Did the dragons have names on the show? Oh yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You answered it the first time. I should I have did. just taken that. I just wanted to like up the Kool Aid <laughs> man just a little bit, like. Oh, oh yeah. yeah! I get that. Yeah. I get that. Is one yeah. of them named Mortimer, or they name stuff like that? Cool stuff like that. Well, I, it's funny because like the kid, like every fourth name on the show. Like it's, oh, it's Viserys and Rhaenyra and Aegon and Damon and Jason. Like, Jason? <laughs> Which, what? You couldn't? There wasn't another fucked up name? What's your name? Allison. How? Wait. Huh? I, I wish it would be like Thorax, Durex, Shaheem, <laughs> <laughs> Levin, yeah. Centaur, mm. Renisha. <laughs> yeah. JJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> TT. TT. <laughs> Theramus. <laughs> like that. That's how I would name Because he keeps the hot side hot and the cold side cold. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. McD. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You get it. I get it. So, yeah, we got four more seasons of this coming. <laughs> um, 
because people are watching it, and I don't blame them. Like, isn't it one of the top rated shows? It is because uh, it, it's, TV? it gives you that hit of Nostalgia. Game of Thrones. Yeah. And they, they, play, they play the song, and here we are with all these blonde people. Like, oh, it's like Game of Thrones, which I loved until I didn't. But sure, give me more. And it's got the dude from Morbius. It's Morbin time. <laughs> Every episode is Morbin time. <laughs> you guys see Morbius? It's not a good movie. <laughs> it's not a good movie. Not I just want that on the record. Good. All right. <laughs> the internet remembers. Yeah, I want the internet to remember. I don't like that movie. I don't like Morbius and Green Book. Those are my two least favorite <laughs> recent movies. You know what hell is for me? Me watching Morbius and Green Book. On two separate TVs at once. Yeah. Just you can't even close your eyes. I don't want it. Next to Liam Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it. You don't want it. Uh, what Kanye West giving me commentary. <laughs> <laughs> I got no time for Kanye. <laughs> I do have time for grand opening. Quantum Leap gets more episodes. Quantum Leap! Quantum Leap! Quantum Leap! So here's my one thing about Quantum Leap. Tell me. I don't like the writing. I think they let... <laughs> I mean, like it's serviceable for network. I think they let too many people be writers. Um, anyway, my boy Derek Hughes, writer of Quantum Leap, is here tonight. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> but yes, Quantum Leap from Derek Hughes in the corner. Uh, the first season has now been up to 18 episodes, so uh, applause for Derek, who gets to keep working. And for people who get to keep watching, if you're digging on the Quantum Leap. People kept telling me, I don't know if you guys know this, but I used to be on a time travel TV show. And uh, I, so the show was called Timeless. And, uh, <laughs> and there were people who would hit me up. They'd be like, this is the weirdest part. Because people, people get angry before they see things. I don't know if we, we live in a society where... <laughs> Come on. <laughs> where people, where people, Snyder Cut. Uh, where people get angry beforehand... So they're all like, they're all like, man, fuck Quantum Leap, man. You should be in Quantum Leap, man. Only there's only one time travel show, man. Fuck that shit. And I'd be like, hey, man, my, my buddy writes on the show. Be nice. <laughs> just, just be nice people. <laughs> you know, it's okay. You know, and there's an Asian guy in the lead. Like, mm -hmm. shout outs to Asian people. <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> it's like I'm always gonna be deferential first to. Minorities. I like colored people. <laughs> I don't know if I'm drunk enough to <laughs> talk about to like colored people. That's what I thought, Mark. I'm gonna go back to Calabasas <laughs> where I feel safe. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, grand closing. The man who. Oh, oh, oh! I get it. I get it. It's a two-part thing. So grand opening, guys, is about how there's more of Quantum Leap. Yes. Grand opening, we're starting. Grand closing, you're about to announce something that got canceled. Yes. Calm down, Negroes in the corner. So loud. Jesus. Are, are they this loud on MSNBC? Oh, my God. No. Is that where they hire you? Is Look, that what I happened? know they hire you to talk on the show, but now you can just chill. My Inside buddy Jason, voice. guys. <laughs> Inside voice. Yes, Dr. Jason Johnson. He gets paid to talk, and he thought he was getting paid tonight, I guess. <laughs> we, we, we about to cut off Jason Johnson. <laughs> Jason Johnson, ladies and gentlemen, um, he showed up early, texted us, and went... Hey, I showed up too early. I got the time wrong. I'm going to get some food. Then showed up late. <laughs> what an interesting combination. What a way well, to... No, he's what just... Is, what an angle. He's zeroing in. He's eventually going to get... The <laughs> he's boom, triangulating. Boom, boom. Yeah, that's he's all. He's triangulating towards the time. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I like your shorts. <laughs> <laughs> it's a confident choice. <laughs> Flight of the night time. Well, he's, <laughs> he's formal in Bermuda. <laughs> he is. He is. This is true. Very much so. 
Uh, grand closing, the man who fell to earth, or earth, if you're Will Smith. Yes. Um, canceled after uh, one season. Looks like his ratings fell to earth. I don't know if they ever <laughs> got escape velocity. Oh. I don't think it ever left earth. What, this was with Chiwetel Elgio 4. <laughs> Chiwetel Elgio 4. Yeah. <laughs> The homie Chewy. I, I just like how you just went fast through. I mean, I'll go quick. <laughs> Chewy on a ledger four. Anybody, if I meet a name I don't know, I just quick through it. Yeah. They're like, hey, my name's whatever. I go, summer, dumb, dumb, dumb. Here we go. <laughs> I love you. Good to meet you. I'm not going to hit any speed bumps. We're just going to power right through this bitch. We're going to move on. Did yeah. you watch that show? I watched the pilot of that show. Okay, so. <laughs> uh, I, it, was, it was well done, just not my jam. And. I, I'm a big fan of Cheryl Ledger Four. Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl. <laughs> I'm not going to disrespect this brother on Black Man Beyond. That's the wrong time. Call him Cheryl. Chiwetel Ejiofor. Chiwetel I'm a very big fan of Chiwetel Ejiofor. I love Chiwetel Ejiofor. Um, it just didn't quite. It didn't gel for me. It didn't vibe for me. Up. You know. I feel like his career will be okay either way. He's gonna do fine. I think he's gonna be all right. He, he's he's gonna he's gonna hang in there. So, uh, so we'll, yes. we'll learn a letter for each year he's famous. <laughs> There's a W in there. Who? What? Are you friends with him? Are you buddies? I would like to be. Jesus, this guy really huge fans of Ten Years a Slave. <laughs> <laughs> and we left off the last two for I saving. Don't give a fuck! <laughs> I never saw the movie. I won't see it. Sorry. <laughs> Still love him. He's great. I just, I'm not going to see it. That's fine. All right, we're out of news. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> All right. So, so now is the part of the show where we, uh, we turn to you, the audience, oh. to help generate content because we got lazy and one of us got drunk. And, uh, and the way it works here at Scum and Villainy uh, for Black Man and Fat Man Beyond. It's your book. It's my book. We got giveaways for questions. If you ask a good question, you get a present. Um, one of those presents is a copy of my comic book, Adora and the Distance, which is currently sold out of its print run, so you cannot even buy it in a store, but I have three copies here today. You gotta ask a good question. Walk, walk your. <laughs> it's not eight miles from you to here to ask a question. Come on, get get him, Gene. Get him, <laughs> get him, Gene. In addition to the it's book, fine. we we got we got two tickets to a 4DX location of your choice. Ooh. Um, 4DX. If you've never seen a 4DX movie, it will it will void you of any kidney stones you might have. Oh. It will uh, realign your spine in ways that you might not ask for. Uh, but it will be an immersive cinematic experience. I like this uh, photo because it looks like this couple thought they were going to have a normal <laughs> date in a love seat on a highway, and it just got weird. <laughs> just got weird. <laughs> <laughs> we're moving. <laughs> Why? I thought it was just us. Uh, I think Halloween Kills is about to be in 40X. Okay. Ends. Sorry, Halloween Ends. Black yeah. Adam is about to be in 40X. I want to see Black Adam. And, uh, and Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. It's gonna be forever. Like, forever. <laughs> this accent we're doing is not good. I mean, it's as good as most of that movie's accent work was. First off, those were authentic Wakandan accents. <laughs> On point. And if you say different, <laughs> you're wrong. There's <laughs> no way for them to be incorrect. No, it was perfect. <laughs> those were real accents. Game of Thrones happened in a real period of time. Mm -hmm. These are all real things. They are. Mermaids. Every play is made up. <laughs> uh, so, JC, Banff man himself. All right. Um, wait, wait. Do you before, not, do, before we jump in, I've got wait, some... Wait, wait. Do you not Banff into Black Man Beyond? I, I don't think I Banff into cantina shows. Unless I get, like, smoke capsules or That's, something. All right. Fine. If you just want to... You just not I, I mean, I could fake it. Bam. There it is. Yeah! <laughs> is, there, is this one that could be right unless we had a... I, uh, 
I have a, a couple fun comments from the chat first. Uh, Video Void TV says, I love this replacement host. He's great. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> Yes. Kevin got inclusioned out of a job. <laughs> uh, Leah Demi says, the Wakanda Forever is working. It's magic. Mike is that Lynch, us or the movie? That's the thing. Oh. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Mike Lynch says, I want this every week, please. David Moore says, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. Every week we demand it. And then Leah Demi followed up with, not enough Wakanda forever for Mark to talk about Kanye. <laughs> Fuck Kanye West. Okay, now we can do Q&A. Who's, who's got Q&A questions? Guys, ask otherwise it's weird, you know? <laughs> yeah, then it's like real quiet. Hey, man. Hi. What's your name? My name's James. James, welcome aboard. So we talked a lot about Blade yes. tonight. Yes, I love Blade. When I think of Blade, I, I hearken back to the days of Ron O'Neill. Yes. Youngblood Priest, Superfly, and Curtis Mayfield. If you could pick any artist or band or group from back in the day till now, to write the Blade, Mahershala Ali Blade theme song and soundtrack, uh, who would that be? And how'd it go? Wow. Well, uh, all right. Uh, do you have a feeling about this? I do. What's your feeling? I'm going to say these three names are going to be out there, mine. <laughs> T-Bone, Pharrell, and... Uh, What's his name? Tony, Tony, Tony. <laughs> Raphael Sadiq. It's like, Tony? <laughs> he said it three times. Like, I keep losing his name. <laughs> <laughs> Raphael Sadiq, Pharrell, and T-Bone. All right. Together? Together. Yeah, I want that. You want that? And, uh, throw you off, mm -hmm. the dude from Nine Inch Nails that be doing music. <laughs> Trent Reznor? Yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. I want that. I want that. I want that. I put them all on. I, I get the money. All right. <laughs> I mean, I kind of, if it's got to be contemporary. Excuse me. I keep having to pull these little blackberry seeds out of my drink. I get that. Um, I think Silk Sonic would be cool. Ooh. I think Anderson Pack and Bruno Mars, I think that would be fucking tight. Um... Kendrick would be cool, but I kind of really want like Bootsy Collins. I want like Bootsy Collins. I want George Clinton. I want that Parliament Funkadelic vibe. I want, I want panties to fall down. You think that's? <laughs> this guy really loves Blade. <laughs> <laughs> you think that would be dynamic enough for the action and the violence and the gore that happens in Blade? I'd like to see him try. Interesting. Yeah? Interesting. I think, it'd be inter I think it would be interesting. Okay. Because I, mean, I think Silk Sonic could get you there. Silk Sonic could get you there. But, I mean, fucking make my funk the P-Funk. Because I want to get... Like, I would like... If, if Boosie made a modern sort of song, I don't know his, his most modern shit, but if he made something that went to the score of a fucking Blade thing, I think I could fuck with that. I'll fuck with that. You guys fuck with Boosie Collins? <laughs> yeah. I know Steve do. Steve's my homie. Yeah. We did a movie that uh, the budget was $8 together. <laughs> the Forgotten? Oh, hey! Whoa. That's why I fuck with this guy. Yeah. Oh, James, you forgot your present. Oh, thank you. Hey! You walked away. Thank you. James. <laughs> James. All right, who's up next? Hey, guys. Oh, come over there. Right. Yeah, come under the light. All right. Yeah, so uh, so America cool, can see you. Look at this fucking doing, guys? cool jacket guy. What's up, guys? Hey. Uh, so you guys were talking about Black Adam real quick. Yes. There's been serious rumblings about Henry Cavill finally coming back into the fold, right? And so I'm curious, 
how would y'all utilize him in Black Adam and then DCU going forward? And what do y'all think that means for Michael B. Jordan's Superman movie that was in development? Well, I'll speak first because I know less. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly the way it should go. (laughs) Welcome to America, you guys. (laughs) I'll go. I don't know anything. I'll go. Um... Honestly, I I would be excited to see a Superman that was a little more jovial. I think mm. Henry Cavill was actually uh, an amazing Superman. And I think just the story... Honestly, I'm one of those people... I actually really liked Man of Steel. I just thought it should have been brighter. Like, that's <laughs> like I really don't have like that many bad things about it. The, the rest of the stuff... Eh, eh, eh. But uh, I'm excited to see Black Adam. I don't know that it will affect Michael B. Jordan's character that much or how it would, only because they are two different characters. But it's really just about, I guess, whatever imagination you can use to cultivate what those stories would look like. Like, I still don't know what, what, what they're going to do for that origin story initially. So that, that would be interesting. I don't know. For me, there's just too many things up in the air to, like, have any idea. And I'm one of those really simple people that are like, if it's a good story, it's good. Like, I think you can make whatever as long as you're good and creative and, like, do the things where you make a good story. But that's just me. Um, I think I'm, I, I liked Henry Cavill as Superman. I just don't think those are particularly good Superman movies. Um, there's parts of Man of Steel that I do respond to quite a bit, although I, I have gone on record saying it. I, I like Zack Snyder as a person. I moderated a panel that he was on. He was a very nice guy. We got along famously. Um, but I don't think those movies quite understand who Superman is. Um, because... <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah. And so, the thing that I like about Henry Cavill being in Black Adam is that it does... G- I think it gets to close a door in a chapter. You know, and I think it does get to, like, all right, here's the thing you wanted. We don't have currently a Superman or a Superman movie in, in even development, really, let alone production. You don't know who that's going to be, but there should be a Superman in it because that's the fight you want. In the Kingdom Come comics, it's Shazam, but yeah. th- that tone doesn't work because Black Adam it would be like punching a child a lot. <laughs> and like nobody really wants to. It's like, oh, don't hit that boy, Zach Levi. Like, what did he do? He just learned to fly. Um, so you need somebody like Titanic for him to go against, and it makes some sense in that way but I wish that they could have used it to launch what was going to be the DC movie universe going mm. forward. But they're not there yet. They don't have the manpower, they don't have the development folks, they don't have the plan. So it feels very much like they're spot welding. It's a bit like, oh, we got, the ship's in, we got a hole in the ship and atmosphere's leaking out, what are we gonna do? Well, we should buy a new ship, but that's gonna take time to just weld that shit shut so we can make it to the end of this movie. Mm. Warner Brothers is like the rich kid who has a lot of toys and a lot of expensive clothes, but they don't know how to put them together or what they should look like or any style or what to do with them. or And they don't like the black kid that lives in the neighborhood. <laughs> 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 yeah. my, my earlier analogy was Marvel was the nerd who got his first girlfriend, but it spent his entire adolescence reading and learning and watching. And so he gets his girlfriend, he knows exactly what to do, how to please her, how to treat her right. DC had the big ass dick, but had no idea what to do with it. That was just great. waving it around, that just fucking great knocking it up against walls and shit. Like, we got Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman and look That's at all of this. Amazing. And Marvel's over here, like, but we got this Captain America guy. He fucks. I swear, he fucks. Just you wait. We got Iron Man, who you've never heard of before. And we don't even have Spider Man. We don't have the X Men. We got these four schmucks. But we figured it out, though. We went to work, we went to the books, we trained. We did all the tongue gymnastics, and now we get in that shit, we do the work. DC was like, I'll make Joker a musical! <laughs> <laughs> Just look at my dick! It's so huge! <laughs> so I beg of you, I swear! So I feel like, yeah. So DC is still in that period where they kind of need to figure their shit out. DC is America. Let me explain. <laughs> <laughs> Please continue. Let me explain, okay? Okay, here's why. Okay? Like, fucking other countries, they look at us and they're like, you guys have so much fucking potential, man. You guys are like, fucking cool, man. I like it. You guys, what are you doing? Independence? That's cool. I get that, right? And then we're like, yeah, and we got guns, too. We're like, okay, yeah, no, we, 
yeah, we have guns too, I guess, if we want, but like, let's just like chill and figure shit out. And DC's like, no, we get it. We've done this. Look at our fucking thing. America, boom. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your hey. question. <laughs> it's a good follow, good question. There you go, man. You Thank get a you. book. All right, we got one last question. One last question. One last question. Bring it home. All right, here we go, Malcolm. Yeah, this oh. question's for you. It's more personal. Um, I saw your character in a couple of films, and I wanted to know what your aha moment was after NYU. What my aha? Yeah, your your aha moment. Your what do you your success moment, moment was after school, after oh. you left. When you thought you'd like done the thing. Oh, my first TV show, uh, uh, Louis with Louis, with Louis Guzman. <laughs> so here's what's funny about that. You looked at that corner like, uh, this is why. Uh, because <laughs> I've, I've, I've talked about the show because I did it. I came here. It's what got me here 2003. But I always go Louis with Louis Guzman because there's a subsequent Louis that has different connotations. So I, I'm always very specific about it. But that, that's when I knew, that's when I felt like I, made, like I had, I'd been doing whatever. But I'd come, I'd been to LA, and it was like, I am on a TV show, There's, my name is on doors, I've got a parking spot, no car, but a parking spot. <laughs> you go lay down in it? I just go like, oh, this is nice, no, don't fucking park here, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and honestly, one of the, that's one of the first times where I felt like I made it, but one of the first times I knew I had, taken a step in Hollywood, and I think I've told this story, is, you know, you go to the studios, and the studios, a lot of them will have remnants of the movies you've seen and you don't even realize it, right? So I go to one studio, I can't remember what it is, maybe it's Universal, maybe it's not, um, and there's the giant wall that looks like a sky or a river, and it's from the Truman Show, right? Jim Carrey, and it's, it's the moment at the end of uh, Truman Show, hate to ruin this 20-year-old movie, um, <laughs> Spoil spoilers for this fucking thing. You should have seen already. Um, but at the end of it, to walk into light, he goes to an ocean. Uh, it, it's the horizon, but it's not real, right? Visually, it's, it just looks like it. And he goes there, and he opens the door, and he says goodbye to his life as the guy who's inside the show within a show. And he walks through to the real world to realize whatever that reality will be. For me, I go into the studio, and I see that wall. I see that wall which was fantasy, I see that wall that's reality, I see that wall that is the bridge to the next step. When I walked into the studio, and every time I walk into a studio, I see that wall. I see the bridge between fantasy and reality, and I realize I've crossed to a world that I had no idea what it would be or what would happen, and I took that step to that door. And every time I go to a studio and I audition and I see new people and I go for a project, I step through that door not knowing what will be on the other side of it. So that was my moment. It's, it's funny, the, the Paramount lot also has the big, like, fucking, the weird sky wall. Does it? But it was the, the tank that they shot the end of Star Trek IV in. Yeah. So it's like the whale tank. And so they, they put the half the Klingon ship, and there's Kirk and fucking Spock and Bones and shit, all just kind of clamoring on it. And so when you're a guest at the Paramount lot, they park you in the tank. So like you drive on and suddenly the, f the ground is blue because you're like, oh, I guess I'm parking in the shitty tank that nobody else wants to park in because it's not close to anything. And it, you couldn't shoot there today because it's been janky for a while, but it's always like, oh, there are whales here. I almost feel like that Paramount tank might be the Truman Show wall and I just don't know the difference. Could be. And that's the magic of Hollywood. <laughs> the magic of Hollywood. Uh, well, you forgot your gift and your, your, your shit, even though only one of us can answer that question. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that's a show. Is it? I think it is. How long was that? I, uh, well, you know, we did. We did a 90-minute show. Ah, how much do I get paid? How much you get paid? You got paid in a drink and a half. Fucking Hollywood! <laughs> uh, have you had a good time tonight, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everybody in the house? 
Um, if you have had a good time tonight, it is entirely thanks to A, JC, who lets us into his bar, Scum and Villainy here on Hollywood, California, Hollywood Boulevard, and the great and wonderful and amazing Malcolm Jamal Warner, everybody. <laughs> Cosby's innocent. <laughs> I love that those are your last words. That's my last words. <laughs> Cosby's innocent. Good night. <laughs> One over the crowd. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not I'm sure. Good. He's guilty of sin, y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure when we'll be back, but it'll be soon enough. But until that time, uh, I have been Mark Bernardin. <laughs> I've been Malcolm Barrett. And bigger applause! Bigger applause! And this has been Black Man Beyond. Uh, <laughs> thank you for spending a Tuesday night with us. We'll be back, same black time, same black channel. Smodcast.com or youtube.com slash Kevin Smith. Peace, love, and soul. This is the cat. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the AKA Ask Kev Anything. Every saga has a 10 year anniversary, ladies and gentlemen, and this is what happens when Jay and Sal Bob get old. I'm Kevin Smith. Kissing you!